Hola amigos! Sooner or later, every motorcyclist decides to test Sir Isaac Newton's theory and ends up falling off their bike. And those of us who practice riding exercises a lot tend to do it a little bit more often than we'd like. What should we do in such a situation? How can we fall off a motorcycle correctly and ideally avoiding injuring ourselves? Luckily or unluckily, yours truly is an expert in the art of rapid unintentional dismount from a motorcycle. And I'm ready to share this great wisdom with you today. So, here is my version on how to fall from the motorcycle when training the riding techniques. Let's get straight to the most important point. Any fall is, in one way or another, a lottery. There are cases where people fall and slide at 200 km per hour, then get up, shake it off and continue on their way. On the other hand, there are instances where people fall from almost stationary motorcycles and end up with a concussion or broken bone. Unfortunately, there is no magical 100% method like jumping off the bike, doing a double somersault in the air and landing on your feet without any scratches, regardless of the speed or situation. All we can do is increase our chances of good outcome. And what can help us the most, you might ask? Bingo! Safety gear! During falls from training on a motorcycle, the most common impacts go to the feet and knees. It happens all the time. Hips, elbows and palms come closely in second place. And the back and shoulders rank third. And I've only hit my head once during training. Apparently, it was a strong impact. Just kidding. Didn't even scratch my helmet. There was no helmet. <laughs> and I'm joking. I'm telling you all this not to suggest training without a helmet, but quite the opposite, to emphasize the importance of not neglecting other safety gear. Boots, knee pads, hip protectors, elbow and shoulder pads, back protectors and gloves – all this should be mandatory. Yes, even if it's warm outside, it's better to be hot than to be in pain. Often you can see people practicing on motorcycles with just a helmet on. And when they fall, it's a big thing. But with proper gear, you fall, get up, lift the bike, sit back on it and continue riding. So, this brings us to the moment of falling down. How do we actually fall? Let's start with our feet and legs. Those who have been following my channel for a while probably know that I remind you about the feet in almost every video. Don't stick your feet out. Catch the motorcycle with a throttle or a clutch, depending on the situation. We must get rid of the habit of sticking out our feet as soon as possible. I don't say all this just for the sake of it. The thing is, intuitively, whenever we feel like the bike is falling, we always try to put our foot down to catch it. This only works successfully on lightweight motorcycles and small lean angles. Once the bike leans a bit more, especially if we are talking about larger motorcycles, it's useless to try to catch it with our feet. In such a situation, for example, by putting my foot on the ground, I won't be able to straighten the bike. The only thing I can achieve in this way is to have my foot dragged under the exhaust or a pannier. Ask me how I know. And even in such situation, despite the fact that bike seems small and lightweight, with no low-hanging panniers or exhaust, we must consider that the rear wheel follows a smaller radius than the front wheel, which gives us a unique opportunity to run ourselves over with our own motorcycle. That's why we should train ourselves to stop sticking our feet as early as possible when the motorcycle is falling. Next, our hands and arms. When we are falling, instinctively, usually, we extend our hands and arms towards the asphalt, like this. You might think, what's the problem? We are wearing gloves, everything will be fine. But here is the problem. If we simply 
extend our arms and slam them into asphalt like this, there is a high chance of damaging our wrist, our elbow, and when falling on a straight arm, the impact hyperextends the wrist, compresses the elbow joint, and the rest of the force goes straight into the relatively thin collarbone, which inevitably leads to a visit to the emergency room. Therefore, we should not fall on straight arms. If we do extend our arm, it should be bent. This way it absorbs some of the impact and then hit the elbow. But that's not a big deal, since we have protection on our elbows. So, we've talked about our arms and legs. Now, perhaps, the most important thing. When we feel that the motorcycle is starting to fall, the best thing we can do is not give up until the very last moment and try to stabilize it. You wouldn't believe how often it is to feel that you are losing grip and think to yourself, oh boy, here we go again, I'm going to crash, only to instinctively open some throttle and somehow manage to regain traction and upright the bike. And then you'll be like, I just made the save of the year, I am almost like Mark Marquez. So even if it seems like it's all over, we hold onto the tank, keep our hands relaxed and look at our line. If we are lucky, we might even avoid a crash altogether. And if we are not lucky, no worries. Essentially, we'll fall to the side together with the motorcycle. We'll fall from a small height onto a large, well-protected surface. Boots, knees, hips, elbows and shoulders – they will absorb the impact. That's why I emphasized the importance of protective gear at the beginning of the video. What type of gear should we use for training? It depends on the type of training. Of course, we never intend to fall, but certain types of exercises are more prone to it than others. In my videos, it's usually evident from the gear I am wearing. If I am demonstrating an exercise in textile gear and the bike has mirrors, then I am probably not planning to fall. Typically, these exercises involve slow maneuvering, balanced training, practicing turning radiuses, and working on the friction zone of the clutch. And if you see me in my leather jabroni outfit and the mirrors are removed, then there is a good chance the video might end up like this. Typically, these are exercises involving braking while cornering, practicing lean angles, stuff like that. In other words, it includes everything that pushes the tire grip to its limits. At such speeds, I wouldn't say that a leather gear provides significantly better protection than a suitable textile gear, but it is much more durable and can withstand multiple falls without wearing out. So when it comes to gear, my advice is to choose leather if you plan on training extensively and want to push the limits of the tire grip on the asphalt. However, if you only plan on occasionally practicing mostly slow speed maneuvers without engaging in particularly intense exercises, then a good textile will suffice. The important thing, as I mentioned before, is to have all the essential elements – good boots, knee guards, hip protectors, shoulder pads, elbow pads and back protection. And make sure everything fits properly and stays in place in all times. For this, it is better to opt for jackets and pants with a sportier fit. They are designed to fit snugly and tailored for bent elbows and knees, for a sitting position, not standing. In such gear, the protective elements usually stay in place and don't move around much. Well, that's essentially all I can tell you about falls during training on a motorcycle. Good gear, more good gear not extending your arms and legs, and trying to maintain control of the motorcycle until the last second. Oh, and of course, good gear. That's it! As always, likes and subscriptions are greatly appreciated. And if you want to have one of my online courses, you can visit the link in the video description. Have a great day and thank you for watching! Bye!